pressure. Tays off there. You can't end! This time he gets his goal! The November World Cup qualifying window is here. Crucial games against Costa Rica and Mexico for the unbeaten Canadians who are trying to stay in the top three in World Cup qualifying. To get more perspective, we've reached John Molinero of TFC Republic. Well, John, thank you for joining us. And I'm going to just kick this off by saying I'm not sure there's been this much hype about the Canadian men's national team since maybe... 98, definitely, you know, maybe 1986, and certainly warranted. I'm just wondering, you know, with that comes expectations. Is this team ready to live up to them in this next November window? Well, we'll find out. I mean, these are two massive games. I appreciate that they're home games and that they're going to be played in the cold weather of Edmonton, which, you know, gives Canada a bit of advantage over Costa Rica and Mexico. But let's not sort of overlook the fact that Mexico is the best team in CONCACAF and Costa Rica is you know, historically, you know, a CONCACAF heavyweight. And it's a team that Canada has struggled against in the past, although they obviously earned a win over them in the quarterfinals of the Gold Cup this summer. So I think this is a massive, massive test for for Canada coming up in Edmonton. The team's nearly back to full strength. You got Kyle Lahren coming back in, Atiba Hutchison coming back in. I'm just wondering, do you see John Herdman making any tactical changes to this lineup? I do think there will be personnel changes. You know, Milan Borjan is back, so it'll be interesting to see if he sort of goes right back into the uh, into the goal. Um, Atiba Hutchinson, obviously a veteran player. Uh, you know, this is his fifth World Cup cycle. I, I don't see him necessarily cracking the starting lineup, but I think he'll have a role to play off the bench. And then Kyle Lahren, as you mentioned, you know, he has been Canada's top goal scorer this year, so you would have to think he would start, but then who loses his, his place. I mean, I would think that someone like Tejan Buchanan, who as great as he's been, uh, would probably, you know, c- come to the bench and then come off the bench in a more sort of impact role in the second half. So some interesting personnel choices that John Herdman has to make in this window. Although, I, uh, as I said, I don't think necessarily he's going to stray too much in terms of tactics. What he's done so far has worked pretty well for him. I was going to say, and it's probably a luxury to have some of these tough decisions to make. Uh, Another tough decision that we often talk about, and John, I know I've asked you this before, um, will the hometown boy Alfonso Davies be playing more up front? I mean, you take a look at that goal against Panama where he, you know, came from a deep position to win the ball in Panama's half and then broke in on goal and, you know, finished it off with a brilliant, um, you know, shot inside the post. Just a remarkable play and only, you know, Alfonso Davis could score a goal like that for Canada. So I think you get more out of him when you play him further up front as opposed to, you know, more in a fullback or wingback position. Are you kidding me? Last one for you. And a lot of people making uh, a lot out of the sea of red that they're expecting to see at Commonwealth Stadium. Chilly Commonwealth Stadium in Edmonton. <laughs> um, how much of a factor do you feel like that will be? And how exciting is it for Edmonton to see Alfonso Davies back there for the first time since he was 14. Well, great for the city of Edmonton. I mean, you know, Davies, obviously, you know, that's his hometown and he hasn't played professionally ever there before. Uh, You know, so for him to sort of play in his hometown with his family there and in front of what's expected to be close to, you know, 45, 50,000 people. I think those, that's just a fantastic story for Canadian soccer, especially in the middle of the, the pandemic in the world we live in to draw a crowd like that. That's great. Um, You know, the cold, I think it'll be a factor. I mean, I can remember when, you know, Mexico played Canada in a World Cup qualifier in in Edmonton in 1998 in October, and they were wearing, you know, parkas and toques, and they were not happy, you know, in the days leading up to that game. And, you know, the results sort of played that it played that way on the field, too, because Canada earned a 2-2 draw and and Mexico looked uh, you know, clearly the second better side on that day. So I, you know, I, I think the weather is going to be a factor and it will give Canada a bit of an edge because, you know, the Mexican players are not used to playing in these conditions. So I think uh, Canada will, uh, will make the most of that. John, always great to get your perspective and looking forward to getting more on this road to Qatar. No problem, Signa, anytime.